Welcome back. It's still Halloween. I'm still dressed like a doctor. So here we go. Um, we're going to talk about quadratics and solving quadratic equations. This is a little bit of a review. Obviously, you could use this either at the algebra 1 level or algebra 2. The only difference is that instead of saying we have no real solutions, we will actually end up going through and using complex numbers as our answers. So I'm going to zoom in here and let's go ahead and get started. Three major ways we can do this. First method we're going to use is just going to be first method we're going to use is going to be square roots. Sometimes you can save yourself a lot of time if you notice that the variable is entirely within the square. Now these two examples are very similar, but I can show you how the difference is. Now here, obviously, all I have is x squared. So what you can do is you can isolate that. So I can add, x, add 8 to both sides, divide through by 2, which will give me x squared is equal to 4. And then at that point, here comes the square root, because to get underneath the square, since all the variables are on the inside, we can just take the square root of both sides. And then x is going to equal. Now remember, if you are the one who introduces the square root into the problem, you get two answers out. Because we don't know if the number we're plugging in and squaring is positive or negative. Because if it's negative, my answer is going to be positive. Now, it's going to be very similar. Now notice here, while the part that's being squared is a binomial, all the variables are still within that squared part. So you can basically treat it the same. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Still divide through by 2, because that's the multiplier. And now I have x minus 2 squared is equal to 4. So now before I do anything else, and I can't multiply the 2 in because remember, by order of operations up here, right, I can't do this before I do that. So I can't do anything crazy there. Could you multiply it out? Yes. But why spend the time? Because watch what happens. When I take the square root of both sides here, I get two answers out. I get a positive answer and I get a negative answer. I'm going to get x minus 2 is going to equal a positive 2 because that is the square root of 4. And I'm going to get x minus 2 is equal to a negative 2 just like what we did up at the problem above. And then here, at this point, now you're just going to go through and solve it. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I'm going to get x equals 4. Same process. So in some ways, it feels a lot like solving absolute values. And I'm going to get x equals 0. So I'm going to get two answers here. You know what? I'll write it just since I'm keeping it in terms of x. x equals 0 or So that's the first way. Saves you a lot of time. Second way is going to be one that's very helpful or very useful. Not very useful. Very familiar. Factoring. Now there are two ways to double check this. One of them is just your gut. If you factored enough, you'll kind of get a sense of, hey, I can factor this. Or your determinant and I'll explain what that is in a second if you're unfamiliar with that, is equal to a perfect square. Now, what is a determinant? If you remember the quadratic formula, the determinant is the part within the root. So it is the b squared minus 4ac. So since it falls underneath the root, the only way that you can factor it is that if you don't have an irrational part of your answer. The only way we can have an irrational part of an answer in a quadratic formula is the fact that b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square. So to demonstrate that, I'll show, you, <clears throat> I'll show you this. And if you end up not if you're not being sure, if you check it, you already have a good chunk of your quadratic formula done. So again, remember that is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, so in here, a is two, b is eleven. And again, most of you can probably see that this factors, but just so you can see how this works. All right, so b squared minus 4ac is a demo. So b squared is going to be 11. So 11 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 21. 
So we get 121 plus, because this is minus, right? So negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8, times one, uh, negative 21, which would be then 168. And that's going to leave me with 289, which is 17 squared. Which means that if I always wanted to do this, my quadratic formula, I would already have that whole section done. I can also just factor this. When the front number is prime, it's usually not that big of a deal. Again, we're going to look for numbers. You know what? For sake of space. I'm going to look for numbers that set this up. So you have prime, 2 and that. So if I'm looking at factors of 21, 1 and 21 probably won't work. 3 and 7. Oh, if I have 14 and 3. There we go. So then I'm going to set, and then remember, if I have two numbers that multiply out together to be zero, that means my magic. That means that either this equals zero, or this number equals zero. So that's why I'm setting the two x minus three equal to zero, and the x plus seven equal to zero. So when I solve this out, I'm going to get x equals three halves, or x equals negative seven. Okay. And the bottom one, same thing. Just again, remember, set every. You got to move everything over. Again, obviously, if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause, rewind. Some, you may even be able to, like, slow me down. All right, almost done. So 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. Prime there. So 8 would be 1 and 8, 2 and 4. One of them is going to be negative. Oh, if I go, what, 4 and 2, because then I'm going to get 6 and 4, which is negative. So that would be negative, that would be positive. This is going to lead into x equals negative 4 thirds, x equals 2. All right. Last one, quadratic formula. Okay, Andrew, look for b squared minus 4ac, your determinant is not a perfect square. You know what? I'm going to put the quadratic formula up there. And again, this is something you should know. You learned it back in Algebra 1. So again, 4 ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. x is going to equal the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And then from down here, you're just going to plug in parts into that. Um, if you write it down enough without all of that, with all the numbers in it, you'll just kind of have it memorized, which is always helpful. So for this, it's going to be x is going to equal the opposite of a negative 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared. Make sure you get that in parentheses so you don't come up with the wrong number there. Minus 4 times 2 times 1, all over 2 times 2 in this case. I would break this down into separate parts. This is 4. Up here, if you've already done the determinant, you know the answer here. This is going to be 16 minus 8. So when I do this, I'm going to get a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 8. Oh, see, there you go. And that's why it's not factorable, because you have an irrational component of it. And then from here, we're going to simplify it. Because square root of 8, I can break out into 4 times 2, right? So that's going to become 2 root 2. So when I separate this out, that's going to become negative 1, because negative 4 divided by 4 is that, plus or minus, and then I'm going to get root 2 over 2. All right, so last one, same idea. Just make sure, and this is one of those common mistakes people make, because they just pull everything off. You need it in standard form. And again, you've probably already done this now. 
Um, if everything's positive, oftentimes you can automatically kind of see that it's going to end up being um, imaginary. That sometimes can happen. So if I do this, I'm going to get 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 7. So it's going to be 25 minus 56. So I'm going to get a negative 31. So since it's negative, I know I'm going to get a complex answer. So, and I've already done most of that work there. So, x is going to equal the opposite of 5, apologies, plus or minus the square root of, now normally this is b squared minus 4ac. I already did it up here. So, that's now there, all over 2 times a. So, at this point now, you automatically have, so in a lot of ways, your work is already done. And then I'm going to get square root of 31 over 4i. Okay, so hopefully that helps. I will see you in a little bit. Catch you later.